Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I cover a variety of different data science and analytics topics, um, everything from open discussions to uh, software platforms. Today we're actually going to be talking about software and an example in R. Specifically, we're going to talk about probit regression in R. Um, this is a type of regression for binary um, dependence. I'm going to use this uh, Kleiber and um, Zealous uh, book as a reference. I'm going to refer to, to to actually their data set. And let me jump right into it. I'm going to be talking about a probit model. Here we have the, the model itself where cap F is actually the cumulative density function, the CDF. Uh, for the in the probit case, this is going to be a standard normal distribution. And then for a uh, logit. Uh, model, it'll actually be a logistic uh, um, link function um, there. So, and then our example, we're going to get to it. The, this is the formula for the, the, the marginals. And, and if you were with me when we did um, uh, <laughs> quantile regression, this should look very, very familiar. Uh, we, we are on R51. You can check out R50 where we covered uh, quantile regression. So let me just give you a, a quick view of the code so you can, uh, if you want to stop the video and, and type this in, you certainly can. Again, um, actually this is not quantile regression. Uh, this is gonna be probit. Um, so vestige from our, our, our last, but we are gonna be using this data, data this AER reference um, to Kleiber and Zealous. And uh, the, this is the library here that uh, we're going to call. And the data is Swiss labor. And we'll look at a quick summary. And then to, to model this, it looks very similar, right? So we're actually going to use the same, the GLM function here. But we're going to refer to um, data. We'll look at the, the age uh, is one of the, the variables. And uh, we're going to look at the uh, uh, it's squared as well as, as part of this probit, probit model, okay? So let's just jump into our studio and let me execute what we just went through. Um, and I will execute that. So now I've got the, um, the summary function so I can look at the, the data itself. We have income, age, education, young kids, old kids, um, and then foreign. So those are the, the, the variables in, in the data set, and we're modeling um, this binary participation, no and yes, and you can look at the stats there. All right, so we're gonna call this, this GLM function. Um, we're gonna um, uh, get our, our deviance uh, residuals, and we can see all the different coefficients and then the p-values for those different coefficients. Um, everything highly significant except possibly um, this education. Uh, and so uh, you can play with that. We have an Akaki information criterion of 1033.2. You could run this um, also against a, a different link function. Um, again, we're using the link function of, of probit here. Um, so you can check out the various link functions, see what the impact of the AIC is. Um, and of course, lower is better. I can also, um, I'm just gonna flip back, show you the rest of the code that we'll go through. I'm gonna skip a little bit of code in my, my actual R example. Um, but we're gonna go to spinograms and, and marginal effects. So if you wanna pause and follow along, you can do that as well. So that's the code that we're going to be getting getting into. Um, I'm going to skip this alternative code. Uh, it's just a different um, model, very very similar results. You can check that out if you want. But I'm going to get two plots, and this is kind of where it gets interesting. These spinograms. So if I go back, this is a spinogram for um, age on participation. So the dark gray is yes, the 
um, by gray is no, and you can look at the impact of age. So on the ends, when age is very low or high, um, the participation rate is primarily no. And then as you can see, as we get into the center here, we actually flip that in that the participation age for around, just around four, a little less, a little higher than four, um, we get primarily yes and then no. And obviously this is what the model is using to discriminate um, the function itself. This is kind of interesting in that it's not pure education. We have kind of this weird thing that's happening on here at very, very low values. We could look at the data itself to see what's what's going on there. Um, not symmetric bathtub inverse to what we just saw um, on that. And then we can look at the marginal effects, right? So if we look at the average of the sample marginal effects, we get um, these coefficients. We can compare those coefficients and, and look at those. And then we can also look at the factor coefficients. Um, and so that's what we're doing here with, with this block here. Um, and I'm using the foreign. We only have one factor in, in the data, and it was that, that foreign. In fact, if we scroll back up here, you'll see it. It's right here, this um, last variable. So um, I, can, I can execute this in R, um, and then I get the, the marginal contribution uh, uh, foreign. So uh anyway that's pretty quick but i think i'll in there you can test this out again on your own um check that out and then i'm going to come back at some point i'm not sure we're probably going to do a couple of things in the interim but then i'll come back and we'll talk about this more in in detail in a future video so hope you can join me uh see you soon